All right, it's 918. We're headed down into the cellar where the door's just opened on its own. You give us a sign that you want to communicate with us. What are you guys? Well, we've been called ghost hunters, paranormal researchers. But we prefer to be known simply as Ed and Lorraine Warren. There's someone here that would like to talk to you. There's something horrible happening in my house. November 1st, 1971, I'm sitting here with Carolyn Perrin, who, with her family, has been experiencing supernatural occurrences. You picking up anything in here, hon? Something awful happened here, Ed. What is it? Whatever Lorraine sees, feels, touches, it takes a toll on her. A little piece each time. You have a lot of spirits in here, but there's one that I'm most worried about because it is so hateful. That's not going to help. This thing has latched itself to your family. Well, we've never seen nothing like this. I'm coming with you. No way. I can't lose you. There's a lady in a dirty nightgown that I see in my dreams. She's standing in front of my mom's bed. What does your new house look like? It's way out in the country, and there's lots of room for you to play. What do you think? Who lived there before? Nobody, honey. No, I help! you grow like a weed! You need any help? I can do it. Did you have another bad dream? I dreamed about a swing. <laughs> Do you even know where you living at? This was one of the stations. Like the Underground Railroad? Folks who helped escape slaves make it up north. Those people were known as station masters. Guy saved a lot of lives, I reckon. And he deserved better than what happened to him. I don't want to live here anymore. I see things. It was a long time ago. All of that evil is over and done with. Still here, Mama. I can feel it. It's in the woods. It's coming for me. <gasps> Honey's been taken. Daddy! Honey! Where are you, baby? There are moments when we cannot believe that what is happening is really true. Pinch yourself and you may find out that it is. This heat is just driving me crazy. 
degrees. I don't Listen. know if I can take much more. The condition of, of retrogradation is contrary or inharmonious to the regular direction of actual movement in the zodiac. <laughs> The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. It is all the more tragic in that they were young. But had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The kids of Elm Street don't know it yet, but something is coming to get them. There's something out there, isn't there? We just see cuts happen. What did that, Lieutenant? I don't know. Tina! What's the coroner got to say? He's in the jaw and puking since he saw it. They're gonna kill me for sure. Did you do it? There was somebody else there. He was locked in a room with a girl who went in alive and came out in a rubber bag. No one knows where it came from or who it will visit next. Nancy, there's something wrong with you. You're imagining things. Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> do you believe in the boogeyman? No. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. She's the only one who can stop it. If she fails... I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. No one will survive. Help me, please! Who are you? From Wes Craven, director of The Hills Have Eyes and Last House on the Left. A new masterpiece in fantasy terror, Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> One sound down here, and I'll kill the both of you. Nothing in my life has been right since the summer of 1958. A time when even the guilty displayed a rare innocence. See anything? Not even a goddamn elbow. Hold it. Hold it. Wait, wait, wait. He wants to sleep over there again. What, next door? I'm Meg. I'm David. There are two young girls living at the Chandler's now. So? I hear you better. Oh, your cousin. Yeah, down by the rock. Cute too, ain't she? What's that? They were in an accident. Both parents died too. Mom says he must have died instantly. You stop by to get this to David. She's something, isn't she? Mrs. Chandler must love having her around. Tent worms. I'll do this one, and you can do the rest, okay? I don't want to. David? Hey, Meg, how's it going? 
I haven't eaten in almost two days. It hates me. But I'll do. I don't care what you do anymore, bitch! Your sister is a goddamn bitch! Nothing I ever do is right. It doesn't sound like the roof I know. Leave me alone, God damn you! Not so fun when it's your precious sister getting slapped around. Teach you to pick on people your own size. Susan! You brought a cop here. After my mother! Best policy, mind your own business. That's how you stay out of trouble. So you think any more about it? About what? Getting big into the game? We got our own game now. You want to think about one thing, girl. Well, two things, actually. First... It could be your little sister hanging here instead of you. And second, I know some of the bad things you've done, and I'm kind of interested to hear them, so maybe this confessing isn't such a kid's game after all. I can hear it from the one of you, or I can hear it from the other. You just think about that. <laughs> no! It's the kind of house they don't build anymore. A relic of a time when the world wasn't in such a hurry. When there was still time for a little charm and elegance. It has stood empty for a long while. And at the price, it is a bargain. For a growing young family, it is almost too good to be true. What do you think? I love it. James Brolin, Margot Kidder, Rod Steiger, in the Amityville Horror. God's peace in this house. family moved into their dream house. They were running for their lives. What happened to them is an experience in terror you will never forget. And you will believe in the Amityville horror. From the best-selling book that made millions believe in the unbelievable, the Amityville horror. There is a creature alive today who has survived millions of years of evolution without change, without passion, and without logic. It lives to kill. A mindless eating machine. It will attack and devour anything. It is as if God created the devil and gave him jaws. <laughs> this is Universal's extraordinary motion picture version of Peter Benchley's best-selling novel, Jaws. I just found out that a girl got killed here last week. And you knew it. You knew there was a shark out there. 
<laughs> you knew it was dangerous. But you let people go swimming anyway. <laughs> Barracuda. Everybody says, huh? What? You yell shark. We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Is it true that most people get attacked by sharks in three feet of water, about 10 feet from the beach? Yeah. What we are dealing with here is a perfect engine, uh, an eating machine. We're not only going to have to close the beach, we're going to have to hire somebody to kill the shark. Bad fish. But I'll catch him and kill him. Did you hear your father? This shark, swallow you whole. You're gonna need a bigger boat. That's a 20 footer. 25. Three tons of him. Hold it up, he's coming straight for us. Don't screw it up now. Don't wait for me. Now! Shoot! fantasies of evil can compare with the reality of Jaws. Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw, Richard Dreyfuss, Jaws. See it before you go swimming. If you were one of the millions of moviegoers who were electrified by the unbearable suspense and sheer terror of Jaws, get ready for Eaten Alive. Created by Toby Hooper, maker of the screen sensation, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Marty Rushton presents a new horror classic, Eaten Alive. <laughs> Into this house of terror comes a handful of unsuspecting innocents. Hello? What happens to these people in Eaten Alive will give you the most chilling, terrifying 90 minutes you ever spent in a theater. Oh, no. Rustom presents Eden Alive, Mel Ferrer, Carolyn Jones, Stuart Whitman, Neville Brand. Get ready for Eden Alive, a new horror classic. I don't care about my reputation. What I care about is telling Emily Rose's story. Holy Church venerates thee as her guardian and protector. To thee, the Lord has entrusted the souls of the redeemed to be led into heaven. 
pray, therefore, the God of peace to crush Satan beneath our feet. Do you understand how long they can put you away for this? I want people to hear what only I can tell. And what is that? What really happened to Emily and why. So she believed that her actual possession began that night at the hospital? I think she did. Emily had epilepsy. Father Moore's beliefs are based on superstition. Did Father Moore ask you to give her any medical help? I couldn't help her. Why couldn't you help her? Because there are no injections against the devil. Emily? Hey, can you hear me? Demons exist whether you believe in them or not. <laughs> Just be careful, Aaron. There are forces surrounding this trial. Emily, can you hear me? Shaking. Do you think I should take her to a psychiatrist? The problem with your daughter is not her bed. It's her brain. Hey, I, I think we've got a guest. You're gonna die up there. Here. Why this girl doesn't make sense. You tell me you know for a fact that an exorcism wouldn't do any good. You tell me that. The sour is mine. <laughs> The beginning of the film, I went to Billy and I said, you know, this is something special. The makeup was difficult for me. Linda was just this cute, sweet, little, innocent girl. Um, I was raised um, Protestant. We didn't talk about the devil. And then to see her transform, the, the amazing part she did with it, to see that and see what she was like behind the scenes, just a young girl, just having a milkshake. That to me is just so nice to see. Excellent day for an exorcism. You like that? Intensely. <laughs> <laughs> 